I'm losing my mind here. This is the third time I'm recording this video because my setup keeps messing up my audio or something. But Flutter 2.0 came out yesterday and you might have heard of it. It's this little event. I wanted to create a video summarizing all the stuff that came from it or at least some of the stuff that interested me the most. And I want to make this a quick video so I can have a title like, oh, Flutter 2.0 in X amount of minutes. So let's get into it. So there's this great article by Chris Sells called What's New in Flutter 2? And it goes over all the top changes within the actual framework. So that's what we're going to go over first, actual framework changes. But then at the end, I have a couple other very interesting things that happened during the live stream of the Flutter Engage event. So first and foremost, Flutter Web got moved to stable. So this means you can now build iOS, Android, and web apps stably, and you can trust that they should work well. One thing to know that they also mentioned in the event is that Flutter Web isn't perfect for every scenario. For example, if you're having a portfolio website that needs good SEO, it might not be the best app for that. But if you just need a web app to do whatever you need to do, then this is a perfect solution. And you don't have to write much extra code from your mobile app, so it's great. They did mention that SEO and everything is on their roadmap and that it should hopefully be coming in the future. So I'm really excited for that because then you could build any website using Flutter Web. One more thing that was mentioned is no, you no longer need the hashtag in the URL. This was a an, pretty annoying thing for me, so I'm happy they fixed that as well. Next is probably the most expected news is that sound null safety. So I think Dart is now only the second language to support sound null safety along with Swift. And this will help you catch null exceptions before they actually happen. So your compiler will tell you when it's vulnerable and stuff like that. And this next part was a little bit confusing, but I'll explain it here. So desktop came to Flutter stable channel, but it technically isn't really stable. It's under the early release flag. So they pretty much wanted to give everybody who's using the stable channel access to test their stuff on desktop as well. But it'll be released technically to stable later in the year. But one reason they were comfortable with doing this is because Flutter desktop and its degree of quality was big enough to justify bringing it to stable. Another unexpected announcement was that Google mobile ads was gonna come to beta. So this is basically a plugin that's supported by Flutter themselves that will help you add ads to your projects. And you can add all types of ads like overlay banners, inline banners, all that stuff. There was some new iOS features like the Cupertino search text field widget and then the pretty cool thing is that you can now build the IPA directly from the command line without having to open Xcode. There are some new widgets introduced like the autocomplete core and the scaffold messenger widget. So the autocomplete, like you would guess, completes your text for you. And the scaffold messenger will allow you to have snack bars that kind of go between screens and they are more reliable than the snack bars we currently have. And this next part, I feel like wasn't even mentioned that much during the event, but it's the add to app feature. So basically if you have a native app built with iOS or Android, you're able to put Flutter into there as well. But one big problem that the people had was that if you have multiple places where you put your Flutter app, then it'll suffer with performance. So with Flutter 2, they reduced the static memory cost of creating additional Flutter engines by 99%. So Huge improvements there. And this was a pretty cool feature. It's called the Flutter Fix. It'll basically update any depreciated code that you have automatically for you. So this allows Flutter to make more breaking changes in the future and your code will be a lot easier to update to it. And then one undervalued part of this was the Flutter DevTools. So now it's not just called Dart DevTools, it's called Flutter DevTools because so people know it specifically for Flutter and they added a bunch of new stuff here. So one of the coolest ones was the inspect widget option that you get. So if you have an exception, you'll get this inspect widget and you'll be able to click into it and I'll show you where the problem is pretty much. This will make debugging super simple. Now they're only doing it for layout overflow exceptions, but they want to do it for all the common types of exceptions eventually. They added some more things like enable invert oversized images and there's actually an extra app size like tab in there that will help you debug where your app size problems are coming from. Then there was some ecosystem updates. So basically a bunch of updates to Flutter supported packages, mostly Firebase and all that stuff was updated to null safety, but also the Flutter Community Plus plugin. So stuff like battery, connectivity, all that was updated to null safety and some other changes were brought there as well. Now, two things that weren't mentioned in this article that I think were pretty cool was they mentioned that Dart data classes is on the roadmap as well. So that means they should be coming at some point. And also the big iOS jank issue that I think is exaggerated a little bit, got some news as well. So they have a whole project, Project 188, I believe. And this basically gives some transparency as to what they're doing in order to fix that problem. And you can see what the status of it all is and 
it's really nice to see that they're being this transparent. So now some of the other things that came out during the event. So I knew Flutter was being used by Google to make their Stadia and Google Pay app, but I didn't know it was actually used by all these other apps. Some like 10 different Google apps use Flutter. This kind of lets you know that they're invested in Flutter and they probably, hopefully will continue to support it in the long run since their own platforms rely on it. Another cool thing was iRobot, the vacuum cleaners, they announced that their apps are built with Flutter and they also have a web app built with Flutter as well. So it's not just the mobile apps, but web apps too, which is pretty cool because I mean, web just became stable and I guess they've been working with it for a while. Then before the actual event, Ubuntu announced that Flutter is the default choice for future Ubuntu apps. So now there's a whole operating system backing Flutter and making it the default choice, which is really cool and gonna make me want to use Linux a little bit more. Even Linux's new installer app was written in Flutters and that means they're pretty invested in it. So it's nice to see, especially since Flutter desktop isn't even stable yet. Well, it's technically in a stable channel, but you know what I mean. And then lastly, which I think was a little bit unexpected was that Toyota, which is one of the, either the first or the second largest manufacturers of vehicles in the world they said that they're going to use flutters embedded systems in their infotainment system or that they're at least experimenting with it so that'd be pretty huge for flutter if would they get one of the biggest manufacturers of cars to use flutter within their actual vehicles so that's a quick summary of the flutter 2.0 event let me know what your favorite announcement was for me it was probably the all six platforms being on the stable channel other than embedded and of course null safety i feel like that's going to make development a lot better but that's it for this video Make sure to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.